Is there anything more frustrating than getting home and realizing that your drone footage is choppy? Now, what you probably realized is that the choppiness occurs when you pan left and right. So when you use the yaw, which is the uh, left hand controller, you move it left and right and it the, essentially does this. The drone rotates around its uh, stationary axis and uh, the reason the choppiness appears most obvious on this movement is because it's probably one of the fastest movements the drone can do. It can do that incredibly quickly. It spools up the counterclockwise or um, clockwise rotors to, 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 to do that movement and it can do that incredibly quickly. It can't sort of move this way and this way because it needs to build up momentum but from this to this it's very quick. So that is when a lot of people realize that their footage is choppy. The main reason for this is that you have your shutter speed set too high. Now to put a video together your drone is taking lots of individual stills and essentially stitching those together to make a video. Now the thing is when this is going really fast what happens is you get this movement this way and it takes individual footage individual shots stitches those together but there is no motion blur now our eyes rely on motion blur to make things look smooth even when I was doing uh, motion graphic design for different uh, YouTube channels that I've got um, there is a button to add motion blur and that's because it makes it feel more natural and the problem is when your shutter speed is set really high it's taking lots of photos and because it's moving fast it seems like it's uh, choppy because you've got a fast movement that is incredibly clear and it's not allowing that motion blur so one of the first things you can do is reduce your shutter speed which means it's taking less number of shots as it's panning or moving um, and what that does is create a little bit of blur in the uh, images that it stitches together and that can actually help make the footage not as choppy. So that's the number one thing you should try. But there are other things or a combination of things with that that can actually make your uh, footage choppy. So we're going to have a look at those right now and at the end of this video you should be able to make lovely smooth footage. This video is based on an article on droneflyingpro.com so go check that out. I'll put a link in the description there. I have all of the information that's in this article, in this video I should say, and much more. That article is jam-packed with links with um, kind of facts and figures so that you can actually make sure that your drone footage ends up being exactly how you imagined it. So go Go check it out. The second biggest thing that I think people don't realize is that they are not exporting their video in the same uh, frame rate that they are capturing on the drone. Now this is a big issue and it can cause choppy footage. Now your drone will allow you to select a number of frame rates. That is how many shots it takes per second as it's got sort of going around. These are the shots that it stitches together very quickly to create a, a video. And uh, essentially what a frame rate does is it allows you to uh, you know, slow down your footage. If you've got a really high frame rate, like a 60 or 120 frame rate, then what you can do is slow that footage down and get that awesome cinematic footage. So if you are exporting it from a, a program like Adobe Premiere Pro, um, you may not be using the exact same frame rate that the drone has used to record in. And what that does is if it's different, the uh, program that you're editing in needs to make decisions. And what it can can actually do is double up some of the frames so that it doesn't kind of move smoothly. It's not like from here to here is just like one frame, one frame. It may actually just add two frames to fill out the gap and then carry on. And that's all down to the uh, essentially the decisions that the codec is making as it's make as it's kind of forming this video. So make sure that when you are recording, um, say you take note of the frame rate, uh, a lot of programs will actually sort of automatically adjust. So if you are using drone footage as like a B-roll, just make sure that your drone drone footage matches the other camera that you've got in terms of the frame rate, otherwise you can end up with choppy footage. So yes, frame rate is very important. Make sure it matches your other footage and you export in the same frame rate that you've recorded in on the drone. Okay, there's also this thing called the judder effect. Now bear with me, the judder effect um, is a very common effect and what it is, it's about the refresh rates of the monitor or the TV that you're watching the footage on. And what it does is 
is, you know, each frame rate of TV. So some of them are 60 hertz, some of them are 25 hertz, uh, some of them are much, much more than that these days. But what happens is, is when your TV monitor is trying to, let's say it's a 60 hertz frame rate and it's trying to show 24 frames per second, even if it shows, two frames per second, you got 48 frames in total. That's still 12 frames missing from the uh, from the sort of TV's refresh rate. So what it does is do this three, two pull down where it shows three frames, then two frames of the same, and then three frames of the same, then two frames of the same. And that can actually cause this judder, this kind of choppiness, which is really frustrating. So if you think you are watching on a monitor or a TV screen or something that is not quite matching up and you're experiencing this judder effect or this three, two pull down effect, um, what happens is, you know, there's not much you can do other than swap out the uh, monitor that you're using and also just be aware that uh, sometimes that happens and it's not really noticeable, but the problem is when we've taken the footage, we know what we want it to look like. And so we can be incredibly critical about it. So yes, the judder effect on various TVs will come into play. Just beware of that. Another reason why your footage may be choppy, and I've come across this before, when I was recording in 4K on my DJI Mavic Air, I exported it into my, my uh, editing software, which was Adobe Premiere Pro at the time, and I found my computer was slow at editing it. It could not keep up with the 4K um, quality that I recorded in. So what you've got to do is use uh, proxies. So import your footage, create a low quality proxy that you are able to edit. And then when you export that footage, your computer automatically swaps the low quality for the high quality and you end up with the high quality uh, video at the end. But uh, if you've got a very slow computer and you're noticing that the video is choppy as you're editing it, it could be that your, your computer is just not powerful enough for these higher uh, quality footage and frame rates that the uh, the drones are now capable of. Even some of the mid-range consumer drones are capable of incredible things. So uh, just export them um, as a proxy or import them as a proxy, and uh, you should be able to get around any sort of issues with choppiness in your editing program. If none of those things have fixed it, how about this? Try a different video editor. Some people on forums have said that if they're using VLC, Windows Media Player, you know, or other players built into their smartphone, that they do get some difference in terms of how the uh, video is played back. And some of them can be a little bit choppy. I've noticed it a lot when I've been using anything but VLC. VLC seems to be the thing for me. Um, and so yes, try a different video player because they interpret things differently. They make different uh, judgment calls if the frame rates don't match up. So yes, it may not be that uh, the video is an issue, it's more of the player. And to that point, if you're watching a video on YouTube, remember that YouTube has its very own kind of uh, compression algorithms and software that it runs to just make things run smoother on its own platform. So it could be that there is a difference between how it plays on your computer versus how it plays on YouTube or another video platform that's online. So yes, sometimes you just can't help it, but uh, that could be a reason. Now, all of the forums talk about SD cards. Now, do not worry about this. As long as you have an extreme SD card that is able to record in the rate that you need it to recording, it's not normally a big deal. Just stick with the normal brands. Now, I have tried to use lower quality um, SD cards and micro SD cards in the past. I do get a warning on my DJI Mavic Air and uh, go uh, DJI Go 4 app, and they just tell me, hey, you can't record at high frame rates because the card isn't fast enough. So I've swapped it out for an extreme um, sort of sand disk, I think, extreme write thing, and it's absolutely fine. So as long as you're using good quality cards, it's not gonna be too much of an issue. You don't have to worry. Just try to steer away from anything that's cheap, that's obviously not very good. And uh, if in doubt, speak to the people at your local camera shop because they have helped me a lot. Try to navigate this world of uh, capturing footage. So there we have it. There are all the reasons why your video could look choppy. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that list. Good luck 
try to create smooth footage. I've got tons more information on droneflyingpro.com about how to create cinema, cinematic and smooth and amazing drone footage. So go check out the resources there because it will help you a lot. And I shall see you in the next video. Bye.